This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome back to Hack 5. I'm still here with Peter and we are putting together the drone. We are getting it all wired up now and I'm super excited. If yes. you've been following along, we've taken the Lisa M with the paparazzi and we've been building out this Bumblebee quadcopter yes. and we should we should get to the air, but before then, I guess we need to plug everything in, right? Yes, yes. So we, we assembled most of it uh, in the last segment and um, uh, we want to, we didn't plug in the brains. So uh, we need our co-pilot, as, yes. uh, as we used to call him. Um, and uh, we have several parts that are necessary to, uh, to actually get into uh, in air. So we've already talked about some of the basic yeah. hardware so, as far as the motors, the electronic yeah. speed controllers, and our mm -hmm. flight controller. Mm -hmm. But we need this to be able to, to get sensory input and also yeah. input from us, the primary pilot. Yes, yes. So uh, one thing, we already have the motor controllers on, so uh, what we just did between, um, uh, we just mounted the Lisa M onto the board. Mm -hmm. So uh, as I was saying, uh, we have uh, four bolts mm -hmm. and I added some uh, 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 nuts underneath and uh, then we just plug it in and screw it on so it is nice and tight uh, yes. nice and so, stiff. so when the aircraft moves the lisa will move which is good because it has the gyroscopes and the accelerometers and the magnetometers all that's that exactly stuff. right there, there is also a different approach to this to actually decouple it uh, vibration decouple it um, some of the autopilots do that um, our, my, our philosophy or paparazzi philosophy is actually give it as much sensory input as possible and also st mount it as stiffly as possible because then you don't uh, get harmonics into the uh, airframe that are um, vibrating in the wrong frequency. So okay. here you have, if you have vibration, they are very high frequency because it's stiff. Mm. Something stiff makes mm -hmm. high pitched sound when you uh, plug so it. So right? would you say it's like more precise than if you were mounting the flight controller with foam? Uh, yes, it is more precise because you are not making it mushy, <laughs> right? Oh, no mushiness. No mushiness. All right, and so we already have a couple of servos going into these leads here. What are these? So these are the signal outputs from the autopilot to the motor controllers. So we have a wire go to the servo, uh, servo connectors mm -hmm. here. So there's the signal going out and there's ground, power and uh, signal. In this motor controllers, actually, there is no power on them. So they don't provide any power. Uh, that's why we need an additional component that mm -hmm. is actually taking the battery voltage and stepping it down to, uh, because batteries are like 12 volts or more, mm -hmm. uh, depending on how many cells you have. Sure. And uh, this is why uh, we have this guy here. So what is this? Uh, this is a micro BEC. And, uh, what is a BEC? It's a battery uh, elimination circuit. And what exactly is a battery elimination <laughs> it's circuit? It's just a voltage regulator. Okay, well why don't you just say it's a voltage <laughs> regulator? It's, uh, it's historical. It's like RC okay. modeling It's hysterical history. is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. So this is a 3 amp one. It is a switching voltage regulator, not a linear. It's nice and efficient. Right, because these little JST pigtails here come out of our Dean's connector at the back and this is what actually ends up getting plugged into our, in our case, a three cell battery mm -hmm. and this is going to provide around 12 volts, you know, yeah. between 11.1 depending, and 12.4. Depending how, how much charge we already used up. And it. we could just feed it the 12 volts. Yes, we could. But it's probably better to give it a consistent voltage. Yeah, yeah it, is, uh, it is definitely a better thing uh, to uh, provide your sensitive electronics with a consistent source of uh, power. So while this pigtail here is breaking off into these different uh, connectors, which mm -hmm. will uh, that eventually go, go to, to our running. motors, we have this fifth one here yeah. free. So let's plug that in. All right. And then you, we have the BC plugged in. Mm -hmm. uh, we selected, uh, there is a jumper, you can select 5 volts or 6 volts. It doesn't really matter much for the, uh, for the Lisa M. It can, it can, as we said, we could plug in directly the 12 volt battery. It sure. would be able to deal with it, but okay. it is a better choice to do otherwise. And uh, we just choose one, uh, one of the free connectors okay. because they are connected together. So we Sounds just good. provide it with power. And let's. Let's plug it into the last one. So Here the negatives go. on the bottom, the positives in the middle, and then the uh, signal is always on the top. It's always on the top, yes. Okay. Uh, if you, if you uh, forget what it is, you can look on the uh, board and the... Uh, the it's silk screened onto the PC board? board on the PC board, which nice. one is which. Okay. Um, so how are we going to uh, talk to 
the Lisa now? Yes, so uh, to talk to it, uh, uh, as we were mentioning before, uh, we decided to use Spectrum. Okay. Uh, There's a couple of different protocols, in fact, mm -hmm. as far as like your remote controls are concerned. And Spectrum mm -hmm. has uh, two very popular flavors. It's, uh, it's the DSM-2 and? DSM-X. Both of them operate at 2.4 gigahertz, so it's unlicensed spectrum. And it does some really cool, like it, frequency hopping. hopping, and it's a resilient protocol. So we're just going to use it because it's kind of a industry standard. Yeah. There yeah. are some others, but this one's really The nice good. part is, uh, compared to some other brands, they uh, also have receivers and transmitters. What Spectrum has is mm -hmm. uh, are these satellites. So instead of having a... So when you say satellites, I'm thinking about things orbiting <laughs> the Earth, but what you really mean is... This isn't a traditional receiver? Um, so, yes. So traditionally in RC, you have a receiver that looks om almost like the design itself. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of uh, uh, connectors on it, and uh, it is quite big and bulky, and it is needed because you are using it directly to connect to servers or motors. Okay. In our case, we have the Lisa M doing that for us, so we don't need all those connectors in the additional bulk. So, so, the, Lisa, so the paparazzi actually has a DSM-2 receiver in software yeah that's and it really just needs a radio a radio and the and so radio so spectrum is using those as their diversity solution so that you connect to the main receiver these satellites oh that's really nice because these satellites since they are made to plug into a main receiver which is usually around mm -hmm. 50 60 i've seen even seen them more than that mm -hmm. Uh, these these guys are like ten dollars. Yeah, these are these are uh, you can get them in China from uh, from many stores. And since we're putting two in, this actually is really nice diversity. We've been talking about this uh, on our radio series. Uh, essentially, what this is going to allow us to do is mount both of these, uh, one of them uh, say horizontally and one of them yeah. vertically. So it doesn't matter if our transmitter is polarized vertically or horizontally when we're holding it, it's going to, you know, use the best signal it receives. Yeah, yeah, the, the donuts that uh, you were uh, yes. uh, talking about, you have then, then two donuts is offset by 90 degrees. Oh, come on, we haven't even had lunch yet. <laughs> <laughs> so where does this go? So this one plugs in into this six pin connector. We have a um, pre-made uh, pigtail that There's has... Plenty of connectors on this board. I'm, yeah. I'm so surprised. I'm realizing it is really like a development platform, this flight controller. Yeah, we, we have uh, plenty of stuff. So we have this connector for the two receivers, but we also have, uh, um, besides the telemetry port, this mm -hmm. uh, we will talk in, uh, about that in a second, and GPS connector, we also have uh, um, SPI. Mm -hmm. connector for high-speed connectivity and we have I2C, actually two of them, and, uh, and also a, um, control area network, so CAN. Really? Uh, yeah, so this is, this is really hacker and developer friendly as far as like if you want to throw on some accessories yeah. that nobody's thought about before. Yeah, for U UAV development board, yeah. let's say, let's call, call it this sure, way. Sure, let's hook up an Iridium satellite modem, I don't know, yeah, whatever. For example. <laughs> <clears throat> There's actually a, a, a driver for that. <laughs> of course, of course there is. <laughs> so, um, next thing, so we, ha we are receiving some uh, commands from our transmitter, mm -hmm. like, um, for example, this um, um, DX6 or sure. a JR or mm -hmm. anything that speaks the DSM2 protocol. That's nice. So we're not actually, though we're using Spectrum, we're not kind of limiting ourselves as far as like a vendor is concerned. We're really using a vendor's protocol and there's a couple yeah. of different... Um, People making product, making different making different compatible devices. Compati yes, exactly. Cool. There's there is an ecosystem. Of All right. It. The next thing we want to do is also to get the telemetry out of it. Yes. As you remember, the, uh, before we were connecting directly to the board over a USB to. So we're not going to use serial. a really long USB extension cable to. We could. We could. Okay. Why yeah, not? Let's, let's do that. Te it's called tethered then, but uh, I think it is easier if we let's are not tethered. Let's go with a wireless. <laughs> yeah. So connection. there there are several different options. So what you actually want is a serial uh, radio modem. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are mm, several solutions, like one of this, them So wait, is this is just a wireless UART. This is a yeah, wireless yeah, yeah. serial link. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. So that's it's like it. bits through the air, that no, nothing more. Yeah. It's not complicated at all. Yeah, and there's, there's again, a plethora of different options that mm -hmm. you can choose for out, out of. So, so what is this guy? So this guy is uh, using a, a different ISM band than the 2.4 gigahertz. Okay, so it's, it, again, it's an unlicensed spectrum. Unlicensed spectrum, it's 950 megahertz. It is um, um, for US use because this 
Right, that's, that's, that's totally legal in the United States. If you're elsewhere, you may need to consider some alternatives. Yeah, for in Europe, for example, you can get the, the same uh, module uh, for 433 megahertz okay. for, uh, for Europe, for example, and then you use that frequency and you are good to... Canada as well, can if I recall. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so th this is one. It has a, an open source firmware in it, so nice. uh, you can also hack on the radio modem itself. Um, but it's uh, pr pretty much plug and play if you just get much a standard radio modem. Yeah, the other solution is using uh, Zigbee. Uh, they are um, they are also available. The Zigbee this is a cool protocol because it's over 2.4 gigahertz and yeah. it does all the you know spread spectrum yeah. and all of that. I, I don't know so, if it's so OFDM or what, but yeah. So the interesting resilient. interesting thing is uh, because you have the transmitters, the uh, RC transmitters, also on 2.4 mm -hmm. gigahertz. This is on also on 2.4 gigahertz. One could say, well, it might be better to use different frequencies. That's why we are using the 915 uh, megahertz one. Use all the spectrum, why uh, not? Use all the spectrum and <laughs> just spread your, uh, spread your wings, uh, yeah. And fly. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fly. so where does this guy go? Okay, this guy, uh, we also have a, um, a pigtail here. Okay. Um, the nice thing is this guy, um, it's uh, again, I think Hobby King uh, sells them uh, already with a Molex connector. So, so all of these, all of these right here are Molex connectors, very similar yeah. to what I was used to on, you know, building PCs back in the day, except mm -hmm. it's just the smaller yeah, variety it's of Pico Molex. Blade. It's uh, the brand is, or the type of the connector is called Pico Blade. Okay. And uh, you can find uh, the pre-crimped wires for this and housings uh, on the internet. So the uh, connector for this is here. Of course, everything of that is documented in the wiki. It's, sure. uh, it's like all the uh, I.O. So all we right. just plug, in, uh, plug it in here. And uh, the other receiving side would be a USB dongle like this. Oh, nice. So we'll just go ahead and plug that into our computer, and then our ground mm -hmm. station will receive the telemetry from here. Yeah. Very similar to when we had it plugged in USB. Yeah. It's it's a wireless uh, serial cable. That's all it is. It's like USB through the air. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, um, let's plug in also a GPS. It's um, it's a standard uh, U-Blocks. Um, uh, so that's the chipset. Yeah. So this is a company out of Switzerland that is making uh, chipsets, and there's. Uh, a lot of different uh, manufacturers and vendors produce this kind of uh, modules that you that have serial out. Okay. So oh, it, it, this is so it does all of the GPS receiving and math, and then it just provides you with a serial data link of what it's seeing. Yeah, it's. Does uh, it give you like NEMA or a, a NEMEA? Nem Yes, <laughs> never pronounced that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you can choose to use NEMEA, um, but in Paparazzi we also implemented the proprietary binary protocol of U-Blocks. The reason for that is NEMEA is a text protocol that you have to parse. And oh, so this is faster. This is faster, more reliable, because it's just a binary protocol. Mm -hmm. It is also stable for already a very long time, so they, there were not real changes. So we have a very stable driver that does this. Nice. Also, what we also have is a special driver, so you don't have to configure this using your PC. So in some other cases, you might need to. Mm -hmm. And you just plug it in, and the Lisa M will send all the needed commands to configure the uh, GPS to for its you. needs, what it needs. For example, um, when you're estimating the position, uh, in GPS, you want to have a model of what you are. So it is switching to an aircraft instead of a car. Mm -hmm. And so you have a better, uh, better, ac more accurate uh, position. Oh, nice. Yeah, because so, that, that's the case with GPS. It's going to be different, like as far as, you know, on the mm -hmm. ground versus at altitude. Yeah, the dynamics of your thing that you are measuring the position of plays a role in, in calculating out the coordinates where you are. So. Hmm. All right. So that. Plugs that in plugs here, just like everything else. Here, another another small connector. And, and so now can, the the last thing is we just need to find a way to actually get our transmitter to speak to this, so we can. Yeah. So start um, first of all, we sh probably should power it. So we have the battery. Okay. So, so that's just going to go into uh, one thing. Uh, our Dean's if you here. have access to a um, lab supply, lab power supply that has current limiting, mm. it is a very good idea when you're putting it together for the first time. Instead of using a battery that, if you want um, 100 amps out of it, then probably you would deliver. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have a short, it um, it might end in a disaster. So a limiting power supply is a very good thing to do. Then you can limit it to. 
a few hundred milliamps, mm -hmm. you connect it, and if it is shorted, so you did something wrong, you crushed some wires, you will not cause a fire. Okay. But uh, we already tested this. We know that uh, this should work. Uh, famous last words. And there we go. I love that. Although I don't remember plugging in a speaker to this. Um, so the motor controllers actually, um, they um, oscillate to one, uh, the two phases, just two phases of the three, and then cause the motor to vibrate and the motor is actually making the sound. The, the motor is? Yeah, the motor is the speaker. No, unplug that, plug it back in. I have to see this. <laughs> so you're saying that this motor right here is acting as a speaker? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, okay, it's, sure it's very it's subtle. Very subtle. But I totally saw it like wiggle. It's yeah, like it's it's moving. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. It's like those um, the, the Mozart from a disc drive or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, cool. that's 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 the way to do it. And uh, in some cases, you can even program the ESCs to uh, actually play the music that you compose yourself. Okay. And then I guess after this point, we've got uh, our receivers here. Uh, yeah. And so what we need to do is um, the next step would be, so we tested it, it uh, powers up the motor control. Is the, uh, the pattern of the beeps uh, means that it is receiving a signal. So the autopilot is sending some, some basic commands to it. So it is working fine. Uh, this particular motor control, is, it really depends on the brand, which one you choose. Mm -hmm. Uh, what the sound patterns are. There is not really a standard, but some beeping pattern. Normally in the documentation, if there is one, mm -hmm. you will find out what it means. In this case, they will just stay silent if they are not getting any signal. Okay. Uh, in some other cases, they will make one beep sure. and so on and so on. So check, check your documentation of what uh, the particular motor controllers do. Um, so we have it powered on, it uh, all blinks, everything is great. So we want to bind it to our remote control now mm -hmm. so that the uh, because we are using 2.4 gigahertz so let me tell you a little bit history I mean, previously in older systems you were using 72 megahertz band yes. and you actually were putting a crystal for a certain frequency into your transmitter and into your receiver and you were based, that's the way you were connecting them together. So, so if somebody else, else had the same crystal? It had the same crystal, you had a clash. So they were on. So if you get out to the flying field and, and your buddy here is using the same frequency mm -hmm. as you, you have to unsolder your crystal, pop a new one in on both. They are your... normally in sockets, but, okay, but yes. still. Still. Wow. So you had boards and uh, um, clips that you were attaching to boards to, to say, I am using that frequency and put it on your antenna. And then if somebody else like shows up, doesn't know that that's what you're flying with, turns on, stomps on your controller, you falling out of the sky. Yes. So you had some organizational and uh, logistic challenges to deal Glad with. Glad I wasn't in the hobby then. <laughs> yeah, so this is much easier. It is digital, digital so uh, it has a, a, a key that they exchange and they know, okay, you are you, mm -hmm. uh, I am I, and we are meant to, to be together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is a pretty cool protocol. Yes. Well, so, uh, so and then how do we bind this? Okay, so we need to uh, tell the autopilot to actually tell the satellites that they should bind. Okay. So what we do, is let's unplug the battery once again. And uh, in this case, we have a bind plug that mm -hmm. we plug in into the central connector here. Okay. This, uh, this is all changeable, and uh, I, I, um, it might change uh, when you're watching this uh, video, so it might what? change where it is. Okay. But uh, um, this is a very, this, for this It's like a jumper. It's a jumper. Okay. It is just telling it to please do bind. Okay. Then we plug in the battery. Oh. And what we get, the they start blinking like crazy. Yep. And that means they are waiting for a transmitter mm -hmm. to be switched on in bind mode okay. and pair. And so you just do that with your transmitter. So this one is like, I, have, I use the GR and it again depends on the transmitter. Check your Check. documentation. Sure. Press the button on the back, switch it on, and then it, you will see that oh, they the, just stopped. They just stopped. And now they're, they're doing cool, they're solid. And uh, they go out mm -hmm. and come, become solid. That means they are bound. And now we can unplug the bind plug. Mm -hmm. And if we 
And now we can check that it is everything uh, all right and it remembered everything. So let's switch off the transmitter, unplug the battery, plug in the battery in again, and uh, switch on the transmitter. And we will see that these should go solid. That means. And there they go. There they go. Great. So we're bound. We are bound. All right. Well, in the uh, coming segment, we are going to go ahead and get this guy calibrated because he does have a lot of sensors mm -hmm. that kind of need to know where they are. And yeah. that means once that's done, yeah, we can we will, fly. Yeah, yeah, we are, we are uh, really close to the maiden flight. We will connect it to the uh, computer, get some uh, um, telemetry data to see that everything is configured right, do the calibration, as you said, and make sure that uh, the transmitter is uh, being received correctly. So. Don't uh, make physical things happen before yeah. you. Yeah, don't don't like you know ignite this and throttle up right now. Yeah, not yeah, like you've yeah. got propellers plugged in. But yes, so coming up, maths. But until then, we're taking a quick break. You know, it doesn't matter if you think that open source encryption software has been circumvented by the government, or if the open source encryption software has been made by the government the whole time. If you have a conspiracy theory, you need a website. A website needs a domain, and you can get those over at domain.com. And with their quick, fast discovery system, you can discover all sorts of domain names that you can check out with, with their easy checkout process, and have your website up and running in no time at all. It's really easy and quick. I like it. I like Domain.com. I like them because they're affordable, they're reliable, they're easy to use, and we've been doing business with them for the longest time because they are so much fun to have a couple of brewskis with and joke around with on social media. You can find out too yourself. Just tweet them at Domain.com to see what I'm talking about. Really fun place to do business. And get this, they are huge fans of Hack5. So they want to hook you up. They've got a coupon code just for you. All you have to do is use the coupon code HAK5, that spells HACK5, the show you're watching right here, right now, and then you get, get this, 50% off. It's amazing. That happens. You just do it. Just type it in. You'll see. It'll be like, whoa. They really must love HACK5. That's right. They do, and they love you, too. So show them some love, tweet at them, and get yourself 15% off. When you think domain names, think domain.com. It is now time for the Titanless Photo of the Week. And this week's comes from Ilari. Ilari said, I was reading about polarized films for my computer to stop people seeing what I am doing. This would be super helpful on an airplane. Then I found Instructables page on how to make a spy screen and decided to use it on my old laptop. It looks super awesome and I personally love it. So thank you so much Ilari for sending that in and we have the Instructables link as well in the show notes for you guys if you wanna check that out. Of course, if you guys have any photos that you wanna share with us, email them over to feedback at hack5.org with the subject line Technolest. We've been hearing a lot of information lately about TrueCrypt and a lot of people think that, well, it might have been hacked or others think that it, the developers might have just left the entire project in other people's hands. We don't really know what's going on with TrueCrypt just yet at the time of this episode's recording, but since a lot of people have been asking about alternative encryption techniques and what else can I do to protect myself against, you know, the big guys up there, I decided to take a look at something interesting with Kali Linux. So there is a way to make Kali Linux not only persistent on your USB so that you end up keeping the same files, keeping the same customizations and everything every time you boot off of it, but also including LUKS encryption, L-U-K-S encryption. So I just decided to go ahead and go at it and make my USB persistent and encrypted. Yay! So this is actually pretty easy. Uh, it requires Linux and then it requires about a 8 gig thumb drive as well as the ISO off of Kali.org. And this in particular is uh, Linux, Kali Linux version 1.0.7. So that's the brand new updated version that allows you to do this encrypted aka and also persistent version of it. So first off uh, on my terminal I have gone ahead and moved over to my desktop and you'll notice over on my desktop I have the Kali Linux 1.0.7 already downloaded as an ISO folder and I also have my Corsair thumb drive already in my computer. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have any files on your USB drive already because we're going to use DD to reformat the entire thing so you'll be fine. 
Now I've gone ahead in my terminal and went ahead and switched over to uh, sudo su, so I'm root for the entire process. If you don't do sudo su space dash and then put in your password so you're root for the whole thing, it's going to require you to put in sudo before like every single command in this process. So just do it at the beginning and you won't have to deal with that. So moving on, I have moved over to my desktop since that's where the ISO is, and I'm going to go ahead and do DD. So DD to reformat the entire drive, and then you type in if equals Kali, and then I just tab over to find the ISO folder, uh, ISO file, and then I press space of equals slash dev slash SDB, and I believe this one is two, and I'm going to check that with mount, I believe it is. Yeah, mount. Whoops. Yeah, here's the Corsair and it's uh, SDB1. Okay, cool. So SDB, I actually don't even need that SDB1 or 2 on there. I can just leave it at SDB. And then I type in BS equals 1M and then hit enter. So this process takes about I'd say three minutes or so. So while you're waiting, just, I don't know, have a beer. And then when it's done, I'll continue. Okay, so we see that 3.1 gigs has been copied and this is the total size of that file. I have checked it. And also if you do wanna watch the percentage of that increase while you're uh, flashing your entire flash drive, you can use the kill command. It's kill tech USR one and then whatever the number is of the flash drive. Now we are going to create the Lux partition in the flash drive. So this is gonna be a completely separate partition on the flash drive that's going to be encrypted and it's going to hold all the contents. So first off for this, I'm going to choose a size. So I'm basically creating a size and we're gonna make it five gigabytes and press enter and it just enters through. So the next command we're going to type in is going to basically just create a new variable for bytes, bcm, Kali, and we look for the ISO file. We're going to pipe that to tail, tack one. And also if you are unfamiliar with any of these commands that we are using, um, we talked about several of them during the Linux Terminal 101 series on hack tips. So it would be a good idea to check those out as well. So let's see, make sure I wrote that right. So we're going to read bytes to do BCM, Kali Linux ISO, that's correct. Pipe tail, TAC1, and that's a semicolon echo bytes. Perfect, okay, 2997. So we wanna remember that number. And the next thing we are going to do is the parted commands. So we're going to part slash dev slash sdb, which is the flash drive, and we're making a partition part, make part primary, with the bytes stated above and the size stated above. Press enter. And this is going to happen. You will get a couple of warnings during this, so just hit yes during them and ignore and they will be just fine. Ignore, yes, we know. Ignore, yes, we know. Okay, so after that you have made a new partition. So now we can actually set up the new encryption that we, have, we are going to create. So you're gonna do that with crypt setup. And we're going to use the verbose command to make sure that we see everything. Verify password, or passphrase, sorry. So this is going to let us create a new passphrase for the uh, specific partition that we're creating. Luke's format, which is the type of encryption, slash dev, slash sdb, two, and then hit enter. This is going to erase, overwrite data. Yes, I am sure. Now we can move on to the next step, which is 
uh, more of the encryption technique. Uh, this is going to be crypt setup again. And we're going to open that encryption. So looks open with that capital O and then slash, slash dev slash SDB2. My underscore USB. And if this does not work correctly, Okay, cool, it worked, yay. So that might not work, you might have to um, nano into this new file to create uh, information inside of the file and I'll let show you that in just a moment. The next command looks like this, mkfs.ext3, uh, capital L, tac, capital L, persistence. So this is creating the persistence, slash dev, slash mapper, slash my underscore USB. Press enter. And this is going to take a few moments for it to complete. There we go. And then we're going to create the uh, label of this persistence. So we're going to call it uh, E2 label slash dev slash mapper my USB. And you should be able to tab complete for that persistence and then press enter. And that was easy enough. Now we're going to make a new directory, tac p, and it's going to be slash mount slash my USB. Press enter, so that directory is completed. Now the next step is mounting your USB. So we're going to mount slash dev slash mapper slash my USB. Whoops, I forgot like half of that command. So that was dev map, map, mapper my USB. And then we type in slash mount slash my USB. That should work. Okay, there we go. <laughs> now we want to move on to creating that my USB file and having something actually inside of it. So for this command, you use echo. If echo does not work, we have nano as well that I mentioned previously. So we have slash union is what you want to include inside of that file. We're going to move it over to slash mount slash my USB slash persistence. Awesome, so it looks like that worked. And actually, I'm gonna go into my directory and make sure. Cat. Okay, it worked. Okay, so just to make sure, I went ahead and I catted my file so I can make sure that slash union is inside my USB. And now we're going to unmount our flash drive. All right, so now we type in unmount, or U mount, I'm sorry about that, U mount, slash dev, slash mapper, slash my USB, hit enter, and it should be U mounted. And then we type in crypt setup, space lux close. So we're closing out the encryption slash dev slash mapper slash my underscore USB. Okay, hit enter and it should be done. All right, so now we can close out of our terminal and we can go ahead and restart our computer and log into Kali Linux. And hopefully when you do that, you'll have the option to go into your encrypted setup which will ask you for your password, of course, and then it'll go right into your persisted flash drive. And hopefully all your files should be there. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart. Restart. Okay. <gasps> there it is, yay. Encrypted persistence. Password. Yay! It worked! I love it when things work correctly. 
it's so exciting. So now I have my Kali Linux running off of my flash drive, which is persistent, so it's saving all my stuffs, and it's also encrypted, so nobody can see my stuffs, which is great. It's super exciting. Anyway, if you guys have an alternative method or if you guys have any notes or comments that you would like me to enjoy, make sure to email me feedback at hack5.org or comment below. And we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back. That just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5. But before we get going, I would love to tell you about something magical that is just coming up in July. It is the American Hacker Camp. That's right, July 9th through the 13th. You guys have to come out to Nia Bay, Washington. It is in the tippy top leftmost part of the continental US. You could throw stones at Canada because that's what you would do if you were there. No, you would actually be like attending geodesic dome housed hacker talks and workshops and awesome seminars, get hands on, learn how to solder. You don't even have to have any like major super lead or hacking skills. You can just show up with your tent, ready to camp, fly some kites and have a good time because that's what it is all about. It is such a spiritual experience I can't even begin to explain to you. I'm going to be there. I would love to see you all there. We're going to have the Hack Across America van and everything. And so I just wanted to throw this out there because TorCamp.org, the guys over at TorCon and TorCamp are the best. This is my favorite time. It only happens once every two years. You really don't want to miss this one. I don't think I can say enough nice things. TorCamp.org, find out more because I'm very excited about that. So uh, as long as we're doing shameless plugs, I want to also do my own with HAKShop.com. That's how you can support the show and what we do directly, Shannon and I, and everybody here at the Hack5 team, thank you profusely for your support throughout the years, allowing us to bring this to you. We absolutely love that. So thank you so much. We have HackRFs and pineapples and duckies and all sorts of cool hacking gear. So, you know, get tinkering, HAKShop.com. Uh, and also HAK5.org. That's the place where you can find all the episodes, all the way back to episode one, circa 2005, with lots of bad haircuts. You can find all of those. They will never go away. I can at any moment's notice just pull up HAK5.org, scroll, 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 click, bad haircut. You know, all throughout my life. It's amazing. You can too. Find all the bad haircuts we've ever had at hak5.org and slash follow for all the places to find us on social media. You can congratulate Shannon because she just got married. Hey, hey! So, at snubs, at hack5darren. Paul's not on Twitter because he doesn't believe in that kind of stuff. Right? He has, wait, you're on Twitter now? He's, he's hack 5 Paul. So, go flame him as well. And uh, without further ado, for Shannon Morris and myself, we are, of course, as always, reminding you to trust your techno lust with bad haircuts. Okay, and this is originally from 1613, uh, just so you can find it in your emails, which we never used it on 1613, so I forwarded it. All right, and three, two, one.